Hello, this is Gerrit Lochmann, and I want to introduce to you our paper, Real-Time Novel View Synthesis for Volume Rendering, using a piecewise analytic representation. The paper is joint work of the University of Koblenz-Landau, the Max Planck Institute for Informatik, and the University College London. Let's begin with one observation. When we look at two images of this armadillo, we observe that they visually do not differ a lot when we slightly change the view. Um, but in common rendering applications, both images would be generated as independently computed frames, although images are coherent in terms of illumination and geometry. The question is how can we benefit from this fact? Um, first, volume rendering can be arbitrarily complex if we use complex shading or global illumination and detailed geometry. And the idea of reprojection is to reuse the once rendered information to produce slightly shifted views at low cost. And one very obvious application for this is to generate a stereo pair from a single image. This, for example, can be used to surface an HMD where computational time is critical. A second application is temporal upsampling in a distributed renderer. Here, the computational powerful render server transmits keyframes to a display client. And the client uses reprojection to generate in between frames. The third example are distribution effects. And to generate depth of field, a source image is reprojected multiple times to generate multiple samples over a camera lens, and the blur results from averaging these samples. So let's have a look at the state of the art in reprojection. 3D warping was introduced by Mark et al. in 1979. They use an RGBZ image that provides depth information. Each pixel is then moved to its new position in the resulting image. But there is still a problem with it, because as volumes do not have a single depth value, we get a false result, and unlike structures, um, may look like you know, painted on the surface. Müller et al. introduced um, IBR-assisted volume rendering to um, face this issue. Here, the view rays are divided into multiple depth layers, and the layers are then integrated partially and reprojected individually. And finally, they are composed using emission and absorption blending. This method serves best for surface structures, but on the other hand, artifacts occur within constant regions. And also gaps may become visible when the view is changed at a large degree. Zalman et al. conducted experiments with various depth heuristics to condense such a volume into a single RGBZ image. The new image um, suffers from disocclusion and undersampling artifacts. And since all previous approaches are based on moving pixels, we try and uh, we try to go an analytical way. First, let's have a look at a common method for volume rendering. For each ray, the pixel is traversed and sampled, uh, sampled a lot of times along the ray. And the samples are computed via emission absorption blending, and then you get the resulting color. Uh, a new view would require another n steps for the complete result. But we want to avoid that, and so our core idea is to bundle the once gathered ray into a few constant pieces. Um, when we do that for each ray, we receive a layer structure. We can look up the pieces instead of single voxels, which takes much less computation effort. And now the question is, how do we divide a ray into analytically solvable pieces? And we do that by first gathering the extinction along the view ray. Second, 
by integrating the extinction according to the emission absorption function. And then third, we divide the result by an equal cumulative distribution. By doing this, each piece has an equal important impact on the color result. Here a volume is depicted in side view. And the strip lines separate the pixels of an image of the volume. In this example we, we divide each view ray into four pieces. By epipolar transformation the view ray is projected onto the, into the old image. And now we use a modified DDA algorithm to determine the location where the old pixels are pierced. We then traverse the new ray and we may skip all layers beyond that ray as they already count as past. And afterwards we receive a couple of correspondences to the old ray pieces. Additionally we get the length of each segment. Now we want to decode these segments analytically. Now the question is what information must each ray piece encode? To answer this question we formulate two constraints on our analytic representation. First, when decoded from the original view we expect the original color to be the result. And second, the segments will be decoded with the bare lambert equation for hom homogeneous matter. Um, a native approach would be to simply use the average extinction, but obviously this would lead to a false result compared to the reference transmittance function, as reconstruction and reference line are drifting apart. And instead we apply the inverted bare lambert equation with the segment breaks as our control points at their specific depth values. And now on the decoding side the original transmittance matches the reconstruction at the control points and most importantly at the most right control point. The functions only drift apart between two segment breaks. And now what counts for the same view we simply also apply to a slightly different view as we assume all pieces is homogeneous matter. We apply the bare lambert equation to receive the opacity and the color for each segment considering its depth. And finally the segments are blended via front to back compositing. Now let's come to some results. With this fish specimen the effect of different layer counts becomes visible. 8, 4 and 2 layers means that each ray is divided in that many pieces. As you can see underlying structures become increasingly blurry. This simplified data set shows that compared to our competitors our reprojection leads to a better result in a homogeneous matter. Now let's look at how our algorithm performs on several different data sets. And here you can see um, the amarillo from the beginning and you will notice stretching artifacts between foreline and backline details. Uh, when we look at this walnut the complex interior gets preserved after reprojection but while the top layers stay fully preserved interior layers get increasingly blurry under novel views. And here surfaces that lie under other surfaces um, stay preserved. And here's a synthetic data set with um, large homogeneous regions. While on the one hand the colors appear correct, layering can become visible in homogeneous matter. Here you can see a cloud with complex image-based lighting and uh, multiple scattering and both is well supported by our projection. And also this data set with several particles pres preserves correct depth perception. But again, um, stretching can become visible for widely varying views. Here you can see how depth of field pro is produced by our algorithm. 
And here we use our algorithm to reduce latency in a server client setup. For example, for games um, and the cloud here is rendered on a server while the plane is rendered on a client. And the latency would cause a lag that can be corrected by our algorithm. And to conclude, our algorithm produces novel views in real time without reshading. And in the original view, the original color is preserved. The algorithm provides more accurate results than state-of-the-art competitors, but there are still some limitations. Missing details of covered regions lead to stretching artifacts. And cost and bandwidth increase with accuracy since the layer count increases as well. Um, we assume an isotopic phase function and the problem here is that view-dependent shading is not supported. And with this I want to close my talk. Thanks for your attention and goodbye.